going in three, two, one. Let's go get this son of a bitch. Hi everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my non-spoilery Avengers Endgame review. I had a chance to see the movie at the premiere last night, so I'll just explain as much as I can without getting into spoilers and whether or not they actually stuck the landing, because that seems almost like an impossible task at this point after everything that they've done so far. But big tip, bring a bag lunch in a diaper because it is over three hours long and there is no intermission. It's not so much a movie as it is a big cultural event. There's not going to be something this big for a long, long time. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Marvel videos. There's going to be a whole bunch of Avengers stuff happening in the next couple of weeks. We'll be talking about this movie all the way to Spider-Man Far From Home this summer in July. We'll do a new round of the IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment about the Avengers on the video. And please do not post spoilers in this video. I will be doing all those Easter eggs, full review, all that stuff later this week when the movie comes out. We can talk about all the spoilers during those. But whatever you have in mind when you're thinking about Avengers Endgame, this will blow your expectations out of the water. Think about what the best version of a Marvel movie could be. This does that and goes beyond. Now, I know there are a lot of people that might not be huge Marvel fans out there. The film does work as its own film, even if you haven't seen previous Marvel films. But I would recommend that you watch at least a couple other Marvel films before you go see this. Because the film just spends so much time with each of the characters. You understand a little bit about why it has to be over three hours long. Because you're almost getting like small mini sequel movies for each of the characters during it. One of the previous complaints against the earlier Marvel films is that they're really heavy on spectacle, really light on character work, because there's just so much that you have to do during a big Avengers film. This film gives you like an extra hour worth of material just so that you can spend that time with each of those characters closing down each of their arcs, or at least the first 22 films worth of their arcs. You probably heard Kevin Feige, other people talking about this like it's the last big Avengers film. Really what that means is, is it the last Avengers film that's focused on the Infinity Saga, the Infinity gauntlet thanos the infinity stones with these six original avengers so like marvel has a couple things behind the scenes that it had to use avengers endgame for like they want to bring in all these new characters tell new different kinds of stories tell stories in different ways that you haven't seen them do before that's going to be marvel phase four so every 10 years or so i wouldn't be surprised if they sort of shatter their universe secret war style or something like that so that they can completely change up the way they do things without getting into spoilers don't think of the movie as an ending think of it as a new beginning for the Marvel Cinematic Universe because this is comic books so every possible comic book twist you could imagine like I said whatever your expectations are for Endgame it blows those out of the water they do this really amazing thing where they find ways of referencing all the really biggest moments from previous Marvel films and then adding context to those so it makes the older films seem even cooler after watching Endgame. So it's not just the next step in this big long story they've been telling this whole time. It also makes you think about all the Marvel films in a little different way. So it's very rewarding to longtime MCU fans. If you're a big Marvel fan, you've been following all the films, you're a big fan of Easter eggs, this film is going to keep you busy for a long time. Like you'll probably have to go see it a couple times just to catch everything. I'll probably have to go see it a couple times this weekend to catch all the Easter eggs. But just to talk about the characters a little bit, far and away MVP of the movie is Captain America. Yes, the film spends a lot of time with each member of the original six because the movie really is about their storyline. I really feel like whereas Infinity War was Iron Man leading the charge and you just had really big moments with the other Avengers, Endgame is Captain America's turn. But it's not meant to be the polar opposite of that. It's not like they completely flipped all the storylines. They tell the story in a very different way than they did during Avengers Infinity War. So it's not like they shove Iron Man in the closet the whole time because Captain America barely spoke during Infinity War and he only had a couple really big scenes, including the big battle of Wakanda. So within the first 15 minutes of the film, you'll understand exactly why they did not call Endgame Infinity War Part 2 because the story itself, the plot, and the way they tell the story structurally, just the way they made the film is so different from the way they did Avengers Infinity War. They do an amazing job of providing a bookend for Captain America's time in the MCU and his total story since his first film. They also do a good job of resolving the Captain America Iron Man relationship. Remember in Infinity War, Bruce Banner just has no idea what's going on between them. Cap and I fell out hard. We're not on speaking terms. What do you mean you're not talking to him? They sort of established the Captain America Iron Man relationship in the MCU in the first Avengers film. So there's a lot of great payoffs for their relationship during Endgame. 
Iron Man himself is the backbone of the MCU in real life and within the movie universe too. Robert Downey Jr. and the original Iron Man movie are the reason why Marvel Studios exists the way that they do today. If that movie hadn't been successful, there would be no Marvel Studios. So in a weird way, all 22 films have found ways of either invoking him, referencing him, or being about him even if Robert Downey Jr. wasn't in the movie. Robert Downey Jr. is on fire during the film. He brings his A-game literally and figuratively because this is an Avengers film, Avengers Assemble. Hulk was amazing during the movie. If you're one of those people that's really bummed out that Universal has been such a stickler and Marvel's had trouble doing a solo Hulk film, Endgame really does give you that amazing Hulk film. Kevin Feige even said before Thor Ragnarok that because they weren't going to be doing a Hulk solo film, they would give him a three movie long arc that would feel like a Hulk solo film just broken into three pieces. Avengers Endgame is the third part of that big story. So like I said, the real reason why the movie is over three hours long is because they spend that time doing character work with each of the original Avengers characters. They do not do Hawkeye dirty again. I know after they left him out in Infinity War, everybody got really pissed and it made it seem like the character just wasn't a big priority for their big plan, but Hawkeye was a badass during Avengers Endgame. And I'm even more excited about this supposed Hawkeye Disney Plus series that they've been talking about. I will do more Marvel Phase 4 videos for the plans that they have for each of these characters next week probably after everyone has had a chance to see the movie because Kevin Feige has announced plans for most of the original six Avengers with a few exceptions and a lot of those plans will surprise you so their weird overall plan for Marvel Phase 4 will make a lot more sense after you see Avengers Endgame. I love what the Russos did with the Black Widow character. Ever since they started working with her in Captain America Winter Soldier, she's been so much more interesting to me. She was never one of my favorite comic book characters. I never spent a lot of time reading her titles, but I've loved Scarlett Johansson's take ever since she started working with the Russos in Winter Soldier. They even do a great job of bookending her relationship with Hulk that they established during Avengers Age of Ultron. They just released a promo where she's like, I never used to have anything and this Avengers team gave me a family. So you really get inside her head in a way that you have not before. It really wasn't until Avengers Age of Ultron that you started to get a sense for what she was thinking, what was going on up in her head. So Wingame does a good job of continuing that thread while also at the same time allowing her to be super badass. Of course, all the Avengers and all the characters are badass during the film. Speaking of which, we got to talk about Thor. I've done a lot of Thor videos recently, but he just came alive during Thor Ragnarok. So if you like that newer energy that he brought to the character, they totally continue that and more during Avengers Endgame. So yes, Thor is one of the most powerful characters in the MCU. He gets to do so much crazy stuff that will blow your expectations away. But there's also a lot of really big surprises from the character during the movie too. You will experience the most extreme versions of every possible human emotion during the film. You will laugh harder than you have ever laughed. You'll probably cry a lot. You'll probably cheer harder than you've ever cheered. Hopefully you won't wet your pants. Hopefully you'll find a good time to go to the bathroom. But fair warning, there is no good time to go to the bathroom because every moment during this film is so crazy. They totally stuck the landing. There were a lot of big surprises I wasn't expecting. I had a lot of theories and ideas about what I wanted from these characters. They gave me a little bit of what I wanted and a lot of stuff that I didn't know that I needed. So there were a couple really big surprises for me during the movie. Most of the footage that they've released of the film officially is from the first little bit. So you have no idea what's happening during this film. Even if you feel like trailers give away a lot of the plot of the film, you have no idea. The visual effects were next level. Obviously, the spectacle was off the charts. There isn't going to be a film this big for a long time. And I'm also talking about Star Wars later this year. There's no way that Star Wars is going to be this big. We could talk about Thanos all day too. Josh Brolin is amazing as Thanos. He was amazing after Infinity War. I think he said the biggest surprise for him in this all is that Thanos wound up being a little sympathetic. Now you probably don't sympathize with him completely because he did erase half of all life in the universe. Whereas Infinity War was Thanos' film, he was driving the plot in that and the Avengers were trying to stop him. The film was really about what he was trying to do. Avengers Endgame really does flip that formula. It's about what the Avengers are doing, them coming together and then Thanos trying to stop them. He said that he wanted to come back as Thanos during the Eternals franchise because a lot of those films are going to be set during the past in the MCU. So we'll talk more about that kind of stuff, the future of the characters in the next week after everyone has a chance to see the movie. We'll be doing videos and talking about specific parts of this movie all the way to this summer when Spider-Man Far From Home comes out in July. Just in general, the film was a great love letter to the characters just within the context of what was happening during the film as well as a love letter to the fans. 
So what will happen is, is starting Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll start posting my full review Easter eggs and I'll talk about the end of the movie. There was no post credit scene at the screening that I went to, but they could just be doing that to avoid spoilers. So just to be safe, I would recommend that you stay through the credits in case they add something at the last minute. But we'll start talking about that later this week as everyone starts to see the movie. So be sure to go see the movie as soon as you can, whatever it takes. See this movie, whatever it takes. I'll name a new giveaway winner when I post a new Marvel video. Obviously, there's big Game of Thrones stuff happening this weekend. So as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you'll see all the videos. No worries. Click here for my brand new Thor video and click here for my brand new Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 3 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.